everybody, welcome to another Chew and Chat. I am Justine Dorn, and this is my fiance, Ron Revealed. And today we have fancy tea time. Yes, with tea time. Two very uh, 1800s folk here. Now, this book is actually from the first cookbook ever published in the United States from 1796 American Cookery by Amelia Simmons who signed it as an American orphan. Very, very sad. But it was published in 1796. And before this point, we had been using cookbooks usually published in England. And they were just being shipped over here. This is the first time a cookbook was ever published on American soil. Right. And what do we have here today? Ron, what do we got here today? We've got honey cakes. We got honey cakes. And they are pretty good. Usually I've not <laughs> tried these, but you've probably already seen on our video and over on Early American. I got to eat one. Yeah, we already snuck a whole bunch <laughs> of these. There used to be a lot more on this plate, but they're mostly gone. They're, they're in here now. They're, they're, they vanished to another realm right about here where our belly button is. But we are here to try them again and review describe them, describe yeah. them to you. We're going to describe them and review them for you. These are called honey cakes. And we also have some oranges here because this receipt calls for adding orange peel into it. So I thought, well, if I'm going to use an orange, we might as well eat tea. the orange. Yes, I would, I would love some tea. Thank Today you. we're having some cranberry tea, and we got this from Candy Store, Sassafras Creek, originals in St. Genevieve. Thank you. Out of our rooster teapot, which yes. is my most beloved possession. And <laughs> this came from Carrie. Thank Carrie. you, Carrie. Once again, we use this all the time. We don't yes. always see it on the channel here, but in our personal lives, we always use it. This is my favorite teapot of all time. Thank you. Shall we do the most uncivilized yes. thing Let in the universe? Let me switch hands here so I don't drop it. Okay, here we and go. Oh. Well, yes, I, I do declare <laughs> that is quite fine. That is mighty fine. There goes fine. half my tea. That was a mighty fine brew <laughs> of tea, yes. All right, well, let's get into some of this tasting because I'm still a little bit hungry. Yes. This is just our little tea time here. Hmm. I would describe these as spongy, dense but pillowy, sweet but not overly sweet. Def surprisingly very unsweet. Just enough to be like... Mm. Okay, this is a dessert, this obviously. Dessert. It's almost like lady fingers. It kind of is, at least in the mold that we put it in for sure. Mm -hmm. So because there's so much honey in here, it has almost a bounce back to it when you try to Boing. rip it open. Boing. There's so much honey in these. That's what, that's what makes them dense and gooey too. Yeah, they are kind of gooey inside. They are dense because all cakes of this time period were very dense. Even with the addition of pearl ash. Mm -hmm. But they're not... Like, so dense that I could bounce it off the walls and use it as a door stopper. It isn't that bad. <laughs> now, in our time period, baking soda and baking powder did not exist yet. And we've talked about this before. It's very scientific. In the 18th century and early 19th century, there's pearl ash, and then there's even more primitive pot ash, which it's all made from lye from ash. So there were these things called asheries, these mm -hmm. factories, if you will, who would make ash, make pot ash, and make the uh, pearl ash for baking, but you could also use a sourdough or you could use uh, yeast. eggs. You could use Ye yeast. Yeast, yeast barm, they, eggs. They used eggs back then. So there were ways to leaven things. It just wasn't yeah. as good as the baking as powder or baking have soda. Today. Right. So you do have to eat these old baked goods <laughs> with a very open mind because they just didn't have what we have today. They didn't have the vanilla extract. I mean, some people did, but it was very rare mm -hmm. in the early 1800s. Like only Thomas the Jefferson. president would have had something like vanilla extract. Because he had vanilla ice cream. Yeah, he had vanilla ice cream. But I've never seen any other uh, recipes from the time period that call for the use of vanilla, you know. So it was so rare. So there's that. You mm. try this and you're like, this would be better with vanilla in it. Well, they just didn't really, that wasn't really a thing back then. It's, it's grown in tropical areas and it was very new and foreign. And also... Uh, baking soda and baking powder that we put in everything today. You cannot have a cake without those things. They didn't have that. So they tried the best that they could, and that's part of the reason why cakes were often made very small, like this, 
because if you made this into a very large, large cake, it'd be so dense mm -hmm. that it just wouldn't be appetizing anymore. This doesn't even need any icing or anything. No. <laughs> it would be too sweet. It would be too sweet with icing, yes. I would eat this like I do a coffee cake, you know, with coffee or tea like we're right. doing now. It's a nice tea time cake. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give these a 6.5 out of 10. That's not bad, but it's also not very good. You want to say why you're giving it a 6.5 instead of like an 8? Oh, <laughs> I would say because they're too big, maybe. They're too big? I think if they were half the size, they'd be better. Why? The same reason why you said you cannot make a big cake is it would just be too much, too dense. Yeah. Too much of too denseness, if oh. you will. So if they were half the size, then it would be perfect, I think. Oh, you're criticizing my cooking. No, I'm <laughs> criticizing Amelia Simmons. Mm. Don't hate me, everybody. Everybody says, how come Ron doesn't like her cooking? I love Justine's cooking. Mm. These are 250-year-old recipes that I'm critiquing, not Justine. Mm. Don't do that. They're going to hate me. Stop mm. that. Mm. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Give me that bag. It's my sweat rag. Oh, you can have that bag. <laughs> Okay, so I would give these, um, I would also give these a surprisingly 6 out of 10. But not for the reason you said. <laughs> so I thought I was really, really going to love these. I mean, I looked at the ingredient list. I thought, oh man, this is going to be amazing. I love anything that has honey in it. Um, and I love that it's oil-free. That's fantastic as well. Um, kind of healthy, really, yeah. as far as desserts go. But... The texture of it is just very strange. There's so much honey in these, and when you bake it, it just becomes like this weird, gooey, rubbery, because there's so much flour. We did one third of the original recipe, which still worked out to be um, a little over seven cups of flour. That's a lot of flour. That's a lot of flour. That's a lot of batter. Now, we, we couldn't really cut it down more because we were running into like, 1.7 eggs and right, stuff like that. Worked. So we stopped where we got the two eggs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We stopped before it got a little crazy there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a little weird having so much flour and so much honey. It almost became like this rubbery hmm. thing, you know, without any baking soda or baking powder. Like, it's not bad, bad. I think it's very good. But I think you have to eat this with a very open mind, and you might be a little disappointed. Because I don't know. I think they might like it, actually. I don't... Yeah, maybe. But, you know, I feel like you're picturing, like, this really fluffy, honey-flavored cake like it, you get from a bakery today. It's not a Twinkie. Huh? No, it's not fluffy and soft like that. It's actually quite rubbery because there's so much honey and flour. Look, it just bends! Wow. It I, just bends! See how far you can bend it until it breaks. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> Bend it till it breaks. Okay. It's not bro broken yet. It's not breaking. Oh my gosh. Okay, now it's broken. Oh, okay. Uh, it's going to have to break eventually. But yeah, there's so... <laughs> it's like so much honey and so much flour that it just cooked into this really rubbery <laughs> texture that's um, not appealing, I think, to most people in the 21st century. But back then it would have been fantastic. You could always dump them in milk or something and make them softer. Yes, but no milk for you, Ron, because you're lactose intolerant and we yeah. are not going there today. Yeah, just today. <laughs> Speaking of today, it is beautiful outside. Now it's hot in here. You keep seeing me pat my head. Well, this fire, it's over 100 degrees in here, but outside mm -hmm. it's in the 70s, mm -hmm. which is amazing. And we've had so much rain. And that brings me to my update on our house. We have all of our floor joists done. And we are getting ready to put the, the sheeting on for that. Yes. And then we can do our walls. But we've been bouncing around every other day with the rain. It's been torrential rainfalls. We went from a drought to all of a sudden it's really raining every day. Tropical monsoon here. Yeah. <laughs> and there's been floods everywhere. Mm -hmm. Flash floods. And mm -hmm. it's just crazy. It's muddy. But the temperature is so nice now. Oh, all them storms so nice. have moved through. We are heading in the right direction because I live for Halloween. And we're finally heading towards fall thank goodness yeah i think it's like what seven weeks away that's not Some, fun. something like that now my birthday <laughs> is the day before the first day of fall that's my, right september 21st yeah my birthday is september 21st ron's is august 21st yeah. weird fact we're like exactly one month apart 
but it, it was a sign that I would be born loving fall and I absolutely adore it. So I have so many fall decorations that I've just been hoarding over the last year that in a month or so, I'm gonna unleash on you all. So brace yourself, cause I'm gonna go all out with the fall decorations. September 1st, it's fair game. Oh yeah, September might as well be fall. Who cares, come yeah. on, let's do it. <laughs> well, every day is Halloween, right? But it's not socially acceptable, but to me, it, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's fine. Well, hey, speaking of fall and Halloween, there are some events that are coming up. The dates have yet to be announced, but these are some things to put on your radar. There is the Deja Vu event here in St. Genevieve, where at the cemetery, the oldest cemetery here in St. Genevieve from the 18th century, we pick a person who's buried in there, we do research on them, and we portray them, and then the public gets to come through. It's called Deja Vu event. Mm -hmm. And it's usually the weekend before Halloween. We wear period clothes. Mm -hmm. Now there's people from the 19th century, Victorian era, uh, even early 20th century. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it's really fascinating. That's one event to keep your eye on coming up. And the other event to really keep your eye on is the werewolf event. The Luke Gulu here in St. Genevieve. It's usually two weekends before Halloween. Oh. That's actually a really, really cool event. Um, so Ron is the werewolf yes. every single year. Who would have guessed? He grows his beard out, it gets real raggedy, <laughs> and people mistaken him for a werewolf. But apparently werewolves are a French thing. Yeah, it's, it's a French, French folklore. Yeah, a French folk story. So because St. Genevieve is a French town, we celebrate and embrace these French parts of our culture. Yep. We brought them over to America, and so we have this uh, werewolf event at the Center of French Colonial Life. It's like a play, but it takes place over the entire town. Yes, in the historic district. Now, there'll, mm -hmm. there'll be tickets for sale, and it happens after night, and they always have like free apple cider and snacks, like cookies and, and stuff, and bonfires, and there's other things going on. There, there's other living history going on, and it's just a fun event. And uh, actually, last year, the kids got a little rambunctious. They took it a little too far. I mean, I, I put on a realistic show, and then they're like, kick him, kick him! And all these kids come up, and I was like, get him away from me, raw! And they were trying to kick me. Yeah, so, it picture this. You might not have been anything like this before. They close off all the streets at night. This is at nighttime. And, and you go wandering around the streets at night trying to find the werewolf. And the, the St. Gen Militia, which is all our friends, but they go around with their muskets and they're trying to shoot and capture the werewolf, aka Ron. At the end of the night, they finally capture me. Won't tell you how. Yeah, we always wing it. But the silver bullet turns me back into a man. But Ron like will jump off of buildings and climb I go all up out. trees. Like he goes crazy. Like, I'll get down and I'll stretch before, you know? Yeah, brace And make sure yourself. we're ready to go. And I'll warm up my voice because it really hurts your voice doing all that howling. So I I take it to a whole nother level. And so last year, Ron was down in the middle of the street, and there was probably a hundred people circled around him, and we had like five militia members tying yeah. him down with ropes. And, and I was pulling them across the pavement. Pulling them, My, dragging them on Michael the floor. I took Michael to the ground. I took Doug to the ground the year before, <laughs> and then the kids were trying to kick me. Yeah, so the kids were surrounding him. Um, it's a it's an adult event, but kids come too. Yes. So I'd say maybe one fifth or one fourth of the people that come are kids. They do have to be, if they're under 16, they do have to be supervised by an adult. Because there yes. are firearms, and there's fire. And they shoot them. And, and we shoot, we're shooting, and, yeah. and we, we don't want me to get hurt, or anybody else to get hurt. Yeah. So if, if you bring a kid, kick them on a leash. Yeah, <laughs> keep them on a leash. So they were surrounding Ron, and they were like two feet away from him, this mob, saying, Kick him! Shoot him! Kill yeah. him! Kill him! I mean, they were going freaky, and here I am. Well, got... they had souvenirs and stuff in their hands, too, so they were going to start, you know, whopping me. And here I am in the background, and they're, and they're saying, I'm sorry, Justine, but we have to kill your fiancé. Kill him! Kill him! I'm just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, they, crazy. Were, they, were going, they were going full on savage on poor Ron Ron. They're going to be like, wow, Ron's really doing a good job at acting wounded. Yeah, because they just stabbed me with the sword they bought at the uh, gift shop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is that wow. blood? He's yeah. such a good actor, he's not even breathing. <laughs> Man, he, needs, he deserves an award for that. Wow, so, he's even turned blue. So anyways, those are two events to keep keep on your radar for this fall. We'll, we'll uh, release the dates when we get those settled. And before I go any further, Jura Dufet! This weekend. This if weekend. In, if you're in the area, a free event, Arts and Crafts Festival for like 50 years, some odd years. The here in biggest Saint event St. Genevieve has. The Jura Dufet Arts and Crafts, Arts and Crafts Festival. Uh, we'll be down there with our stuff for sale, with Candy, with all her wares from her store. We're moving the entire store mm -hmm. down to there. 
Uh, look it up on visitstgym.com. You can find it in the events that are happening. It's called the Jur de Fet. Uh, that's this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. It's from about 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. both days, and it's free. And so do you know the date on that? Uh, I don't, but if you're watching it, it's, it's always the second okay. full weekend of August. Okay, so if you're watching this six months from now, it's in August. Yeah, it's in August. Come <laughs> it's back August. next year. So what it is, it. is a giant <laughs> craft fair. They close off all the streets in St. Genevieve, and they have hundreds of vendors line the street. And, and I food. mean hundreds. And food. If they say it's one of the biggest events of its kind in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. And it happens every single year in St. Genevieve, in our town. And we are one of the people that has a booth up there. Usually Ron is there selling his woodworking, his uh, tables and chairs and ca cabinets and whatnot that he makes. But he's not doing that this year because we're so busy building a house. So no. instead we're with Candy. But we will have a few things there that I have left over. But mm -hmm. we're, we're there to help Candy. Uh, so if you still like colonial and history stuff and cool stuff want to come meet us, please come out and meet us. Candy will be there. Dale will be there as well. Um, it's looking like good weather right now because yes. like I said all these storms moved for through this last week and now it's in the 70s mm -hmm. It's it's really nice. The nickname of Jersey Fett is Jersey Sweat. Jersey Sweat. Because it's usually 90 Here degrees. in the state of misery, Missouri. <laughs> it gets real swampy. Real swampy. Real swampy up here. <laughs> now I got something to say. What'd you got to say? Looking at that teapot made me think of it. Guess what? We got a new rooster. We did. You guys remember the last one that we got? Colonel Sanders. Colonel he was Sanders. A jerk, man. Yeah, that did <laughs> that one did not really work out. I mean, he drew blood multiple times on us. He was dangerous. He was a carnivore chicken. I mean, he was really, really mean. Like, he, every time we went in the coop to feed him and the hens, it was like Russian roulette. There was a fifty percent chance you were gonna live to see your mama again that night because yeah. he was savage. He was full on crazy. <laughs> Well, guess what? A raccoon got him eventually. We didn't get him. A raccoon got they him. They beat me too because I was going to get him instead. <laughs> I had enough. Yeah, but a raccoon got him. But guess what? We got another rooster and we got him for free because someone that lives in our town uh, just put out an ad saying that she had five extra roosters and she was desperate to get rid of them. Tell him his name. You're going to like Colonel it. Cluck. No. What is it? I forgot. You named him. Captain Cluck. Captain Cluck, yeah, Captain Cluck. <laughs> so anyway, we got him for free. But and so far, so good. He's a pretty bird. He's handsome. Yeah, so far he has not attacked us or anything. <laughs> the only nice. thing about him is he's extremely territorial about his food. Like, he won't let the hens eat. So we're kind of... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He won't let the hens eat, so we're a little worried about that. It's That's usually the opposite of what a rooster does. I think um, he's just real hungry. It's only been two days, so we'll see what happens. We'll see, but he's like scaring the hens away. And the second thing is he crows like literally every 30 seconds. But he's nice so yes, far. Yes, he is very nice. I've never had a rooster that crowed as much as he does. So if you heard in the video today in the background a whole lot of rooster crowing, that is Captain Cluck. There he Do is. you hear that? He does On it cue. every 30 seconds. He does. I've never, and maybe because he's new here, I don't know, but he's going crazy. The last one would do it like, I don't know, five times a day. And that was it. Yes. Some people don't like that sound. I normally really, really love that sound. They say it's not a home until you hear the rooster crow. But every 30 seconds, come on now. <laughs> we don't have to do that. But we'll wait and see. These are good oranges. There he goes again. <laughs> now, some of you are probably saying, well, they didn't have oranges back then. Well, yeah, because they didn't have a Walmart. But guess what they did have? They had a ship that came up the Mississippi and delivered them. Just like everywhere else. There was all kinds of citrus uh, and, re and recipes in these old books of our time period. And yeah. how else would you get that? You would get that either from a wagon or from a, a ship coming up the river. Guess what, guys? Missouri... Oranges do not grow in Missouri, even in the year 2023. Unless you got a fancy greenhouse. <laughs> yeah, unless you have a very fancy greenhouse. But would... I doubt somebody goes to that trouble. Yeah, are you growing oranges and are you growing lemons in Missouri? No, you're not. So where do they come from? They're usually grown Florida. in other states. Yeah, off in Florida. And then they're shipped up to where they need to go. Well, guess what? It was the same 200 years ago. I just told them that. This <laughs> book, American <laughs> Cookery, if I'm not mistaken, it was published in New York. Yeah. I think it was. So where, how, and 
That's every, a long ways away. I know every other recipe in this has lemon or oranges in it. They were obsessed with citrus fruits back then. So if we can get it here in Missouri, they could have gotten it in New York, obviously. In fact, in this time period, I believe it was in England that they started giving rations of citrus fruits to Navy sailors. Yes, for the scurvy. Yeah, to ward off scurvy. So by the 1800s, they understood the importance of citrus and it was no longer so exotic that only the top 1% of people could afford it. They were even giving it to soldiers now. I will say, now, <laughs> you can buy this from Candy. She has these in her store. This book has some of the best recipes that we've ate on here. Yeah. These other books that are from London or France or wherever they may be from, their, their dishes are okay, but almost all the ones we've tried from American Cookery, I like more They're than really the other good. ones. There, there's nothing weird in them. Yeah, there's usually nothing weird. And that's just my opinion. I was expecting this to have wine in it. I'm glad it didn't. Thank I, God. <laughs> actually, I'm surprised it doesn't have like a, a liquor in it, like a brandy uh -huh. or something. Well, thank goodness. Yeah, I like these. Hey, let's get into some of these this week in history. It's a short list this week, but it, it's some uh, good ones here. <laughs> Uh, drum roll, please. This week in history! Here we go! So, oh, yeah. <laughs> For this week, we've got August 6th in 1890. At Auburn Prison, New York, murderer William Kimmler becomes the first person to be executed by the electric chair. What year? <laughs> 1890. Oh. <laughs> I'm what? surprised the chair didn't break. What year was this? This was in 1890. 1890, the first guy got executed by the electric chair, and of course it had to happen in America, but that's way earlier than I thought. Well, guess, guess how he, what he, uh, well, he committed murder, but guess what he did during that murder? He took his hatchet to know. his wife. Oh my gosh. He hatcheted her. He hatched, is that a word? He hatcheted her? He hatcheted her. Ron, can you put that hatchet down? You're making me a little nervous. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Moving Next. on. <laughs> August 7th, 1782, George Washington orders the creation of the Badge of Military Merit to honor soldiers wounded in battle. Now, this is later on renamed as the Purple Heart. Hmm. That's why the Purple Heart has George Washington on it. Oh, my goodness. Yes, ma'am. That is just a really cool fact that I didn't know. But they, they kept the, the heart shape, obviously, and the colors, but they just put his face on it when they changed it. 1782. So the Purple Heart has been around since the 1780s. Yeah. All right, next up on August 8th in 1610, the, the first Anglo-Poetan War begins. Now, there's three of these wars uh, towards Jamestown in the early 1600s, but this is the first one when this one starts. Isn't this the first war... Um, in America, on American soil, yes. technically between the colonists and the Native Americans. Yes, yes, this is the mm -hmm. first con, like full-on conflict. Yeah. So the Indians lay siege on the Jamestown during the winter, and they starve, and then they finally get reinforcements come springtime, and then they really attack the Indians. They they kill the women and children and burn the villages. Yes. There is a bad deal. Then the Indians. Uh, Ha, you know, made alliances with other Indian groups, and then they attacked them back. Yeah, um, and it was... And long story short, one of the colonists kidnaps Pocahontas, and he takes her and uses her as leverage to create peace. So the story goes that um, the Native Americans at first thought that the colonists were there just for trading purposes, so it was all fine and dandy. Mm -hmm. But after some time, it became more apparent that they were there to take land. They kept going a little farther? Yeah, little the colonists farther. kept on going a little bit farther out, a little bit farther out, more than what they agreed upon with the natives. They're hungry. And, and so they were, the natives were very angry about that, and this started this war where one side was killing each other. It was absolutely crazy. Like, one year there would be a siege where the Native Americans came in um, to Jamestown and they would kill hundreds The Jamestown Massacre. Yeah, hundreds. And then and to retaliate, the colonists would go out and do the exact same thing to the Native Americans, and it happened back and forth over and over and over and over again. Um, I remember there was one in the 1620s, I think 1622, called the Indian Massacre. That was during the Second Annual yeah. War. Yeah, and where the Native Americans came into Jamestown, and they killed something like 300 
over 300 colonists, women and children, they said even babies, they killed them. Like, they didn't discriminate any. Wow. But then as soon as that was over, the colonists went out and did the same things to the Native Americans. So it was like back and forth, nonstop. And so what happened is that Pocahontas, she was a daughter of the tribe leader, right? Yes. She was uh, tricked into going onto a boat to just look at it. And then she was kidnapped and held for ransom in exchange for the native tribe returning uh, European hostages that they had. They said, well, we have Pocahontas, we'll trade you if you return the hostages with Pocahontas, and also you have to give back the guns that they took. Because they were afraid that if the Native Americans had guns, that they were gonna come back during the next siege and kill off even more mm -hmm. of the colonists. Um, so the Native Americans said that they were going to return the uh, captives. They returned the captives and they returned a few of the guns, but they didn't return all of the guns, which meant that they didn't return Pocahontas. So this went on for a very long time. I think it went on for a year or something. And then finally they wanted to release Pocahontas, but she refused to go back to, the, to her own tribe. Wow. She said, I cannot believe that they risked my life by not giving back all the guns. She said, they, my people thought that the guns were more valuable than my life was. And she said that the people, the colonists were treating her better as a woman than her tribe was treating her. So wow. she actually uh, got incorporated into the colonists uh, town and she ended up marrying who was it? John Smith? Or? Nope, not no, who John was it? Smith. No, not that's like, what the movie says. That's said. what the movie says. Yeah. John Ralph. John Ralph. I get it. His name don't roll off a ton like the word Smith does. Okay, so Smith is cooler. In but, real life, but Ralph. she married John Ralph. I think she was 17 or 18 years old when that marriage took place. And then she actually ends up going back to England, I think mm. it was, with him. And she was treated very, very well over there. She was actually presented to the English court and everything. Wow. Now, um, unfortunately, she died I, when she was in her early 20s from pneumonia. Either It was either pneumonia or dysentery. No one knows for mm. sure exactly. She had one kid with him. It was a son. Yeah. And he, um, he was half English and then half Native American. Her son, when he grew up, I think he went back to Virginia. And also John Ralph went back to Virginia mm. when she died. And he was famous after that for growing tobacco. Wow. John Ralph's tobacco. Yeah. Don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> Five dollars a bushel. <laughs> yeah, their lives were absolutely incredible, really. I mean, the story is absolutely amazing. Yeah, once you get past all the blood and guts at the beginning, uh, oh, yeah. actually quite an adventurous life going. Oh, yeah. You know, I couldn't, I've never crossed the sea. You've crossed the sea before. In quite an airplane. In a plane, <laughs> of course, but I've never been over there. So I, I, it, it's, it's very, it well, blows it's a long my trip. mind. Thinking how people did that back then on little AB ship. Yeah. And they come all the way over here not having weather radar or anything like that. Yeah, you see think... what's coming. You're, you're sailing blind. Yeah, because their big ships back then were small compared to our ships today. Oh, yeah. So I, I just can't <laughs> fathom how they just, yeah, I'm going to go to America. And then they went. Or, oh, I'm going to go back over to Europe. And they just go. I mean, the trip took weeks. I, I, maybe yeah, I'll be honest with two you. Months. I don't like deep water. I don't, I don't like deep water I don't think either. I would do it we, without having radar or some right. way to contact for emergency in case the big old wave oh, comes. Oh, that's and true. Me. You don't really have a way to do that. Nope. They, that's why they would often travel um, in groups. Fleets. Yeah, fleets. Yes. So if one or two of the ships got lost, the other ships would be witness to that. Right. Well, hey, we got two more on here. We got some birthdays. On August 10th, 1874, our 31st president of the United States, Herbert Huber, is born. And he died oh. in uh, 1964. Wow, he lived a pretty long time. Did he invent the Hoover vacuums by chance? No, that was actually William Hoover. And no, it wasn't his cousin. They, they claim not to be related. They're not I, related. Which I find to be very... Suspicious! Yeah. Are they lying to us? <laughs> Somebody probably got... Mad at somebody in the family 50 years before they were born. No. <laughs> well, that's what happens around here. People with the same name that live in the southern part of the county, the northern part of the county, they claim not to be related, but I guarantee if you go back 50 years, they were. That's together. true. And then they probably got the brothers separated because the farm and they got that mad could be. and, you know, yeah. so who knows? They could have had one brother related to each <laughs> other knows? in 1780 and that's it. But. And I got one more birthday, and this one here is pretty cool. 
You guys know it's John Townsend's birthday? Townsend's? It is Townsend's birthday. Our beloved Townsend's that we've been begging to get on this show yes. for years now. Come Townsend's, on over. happy birthday. Come on over. We'll make you some honey cakes. We'll make you a cake. We'll make you anything that you want. Just please be our friend. <laughs> We even put nutmeg in it. We'll put whatever you want in it. Anything, we'll put it in there. John Townsend was born on August 10th, 1809. Whoa, he's older than I thought. And he died in 1851. So that's why he's so good at that historic cooking, because he saw it <laughs> firsthand. <laughs> this John Townsend was an artist and an explorer and an adventurer and a zoologist. Oh, so it's a different guy. He just had coincidentally has the same name. Same name. You picked I, that on purpose. I don't know. Didn't Look at you? him. Look at the pictures. What do you think? I, same I guy? It. It's definitely the same I guy. I think he's got a time machine like we do, and he, he goes back and forth. John, I'm out, I'm on to you. I know your secret. He's a vampire. It, it's not pixie dust, it's nutmeg. It's the nutmeg. The it keeps dust. you immortal. <laughs> Hold up! What's this? Sprinkle a little bit on me. This is nutmeg. Sprinkle a little on my, on my head and see if I turn into... I want you to live a really long life, Ron, okay. because I love you very much. What I turn into? Hey, look at me! Woo! <laughs> I didn't know I was coming back at George Washington. That's pretty cool. Oh wow! What happens when you sprinkle some on me? I love you, America. Let's see. Hey, Martha. How you doing, Martha? Hey, George. I mean, uh... hey, George. <laughs> Hey, I'm, I'm back. It's me, Ron. <laughs> Woo, that's I'm first, covered in nutmeg now. That's the first time and probably not the last time I ever time travel. That's pretty cool. <laughs> but it's the first time I've covered myself in nutmeg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay back, Townsend. She's mine. <laughs> Don't worry. We can't even get him on the show, let alone do that. <laughs> hey, we'll come to your show. We will come to your show. We, like the, we like the road trip. For any of you guys that don't know, we've emailed Townsend so many times. We've asked, can we please do a, co a collab? And we never hear back from We never hear back. We love Townsend's. We would love to do a collab. That would be so cool. We, we love everybody that does what we do. Yes, we we're, do. We're all in this together as yeah. far as history goes. Because, you know, history is being erased and mm. forgotten and twisted and turned. Yeah. So Our uh, goal is to reach as many people as possible and teach them about that's right. American history. And especially through food history just to show people that they were not as primitive as a lot think back then just banging stones together and and pooping in a hole in the ground and pooping in a hole in the <laughs> ground yeah the people back then they had very complex diets and clothes and music and architecture and all that and we just wanted to spell all those myths there's a lot of fancy stuff back then way fancier than today crazy like especially oh, yeah. like woodworking things Things that we could not do today. There's no way I could build any of that stuff. Oh back yeah, then. I know. Like it's the incredible. Chippendale dressers and hutches and stuff. It's incredible. Forget about it. I can't do it, and I got modern tools. I wouldn't know how to do that stuff. The, right. The talent is so high back then. It just with, with shows anything, you. the craftsmanship. Yes, it shows you that we are capable of doing those things. We have to be capable of it. You just have oh. to use a hundred percent of your mind and not get distracted which is so easy to do in today's world. Well, that's because we do too much of this. Yeah, we do too much of this. Before you know it, you've spent five hours just browsing a website when you could have spent those five hours <clears throat> 200 years ago, they would have spent those five hours learning how to do a craft and being really yeah. proud of what they do. They spend years being an apprentice before they become a master oh, yeah. at their craft. Yeah. <sighs> it's, it's hard to imagine. I mean, it, it, the Amish are the closest you're going to get to as far as not being distracted and learning a craft because they make amazing things, not just wood yes. furniture, but anything they do, they do it to their, you know, 110%. They yes, do they do. Even, even their farming, it's an all-day job and they're not distracted by other things. And right. When we're here, when we're doing history things, it's so much fun because we're not distracted with those things. Mm -hmm. But when we get away from this during the week at our work or, or whatever... I hate that I even get so distracted. It's like, man, I can't wait till the weekend till we get to do history with yes. our friends. Yes, and there's and a, stuff. There's a real peace and beauty to this life. Yes, it's a there love really hate is. relationship. Yeah, there really is. Of course, there were a lot of drawbacks. I mean, back then, obviously, if you actually lived in this time period, there were so many drawbacks as well. Right. But there were so many pluses. There's no ibuprofen. There's no air conditioning. 
There's no cushion Dr. Scholl's for your shoes. No. So if we can just take all the, the, the positives of both time periods and melt them together, yeah. we will have world peace. Yeah, that would be pretty <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, that would be. But hey, we're going to hop off here and we're going to get out of here because it is nice outside. It's in the 70s. You don't get it that is. in August very often. So no. we're going to go <laughs> soak that up. So thank you all so much for being here. We're almost at 75,000 people, which I cannot believe. Thank you so, 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 Thank so, you. so, 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 so much. 75,000 friends on Frontier Patriot. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to curtsy you. You're going to curtsy them? I am going to curtsy. I would, curtsy. but my head would be cut off when I stand up. Thank you, my friends. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a great rest of the week. We love you. We bye -bye. love you. Take care, everyone, and see you next week. Bye-bye.